You hear about it every day, on the TV, on the radio. They even make movies about it. Child molesters. Adults who want to have sex with kids. That would never happen to me. I know enough to look out for strangers. <laughs> well, here's a news flash. Most child molesters are not strangers. They're usually someone a kid knows. Like a friend or even a relative. Someone that you trust. A lot of kids don't even know or see what's happening until they're in the middle of it. They just think they're hanging out together because the person really cares about them. That's what happened to Justin. In his case, it was a relative, his uncle Joe, who he trusted and liked a lot. Justin spends a lot of time with his uncle because his mom works nights and his dad does a lot of traveling with his job. So to Justin, Uncle Joe is almost like another dad and they've grown really close. His parents think it's great they've got such a good relationship. It helps them out a lot, but things aren't exactly as they may seem. Uncle Joe, it's me. Justin, come on in. I got a surprise for you. What's up? Where's Aunt Jennifer? Uh, ladies night out. Whoa, you have most definitely been working out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you doing this for some girl? Nah, I'm just trying to impress the coach. You know, got some serious competition with the other guys. Well, no problem here. I mean, look at these muscles. <laughs> Any coach would be out of his mind if he let you get away. <laughs> Tell him that, would you? Maybe you need someone to show you how to talk to your coach, to, to get him to see your true potential. Or maybe to talk to him for you. Bet you I could do that. Would you? For my favorite nephew, anything. <laughs> Sweet. I almost forgot the surprise. Get out. An Xbox? You bought an Xbox. Yes. <laughs> you know I love to have you around, Justin, and I figured I'd get something new for when you're here. I don't know about you, but I am getting tired of hanging out playing video games at the mall, so I decided to bring the games to us. <laughs> wow, thanks. You're the best, Uncle Joe. Hmm. Up for a game now? Sure. It's all set and ready to go. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that your mom called and said she's going to have to work late, so that means that you could stay over. No rules, no curfew. You can stay up as late as you like. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I lost again. I don't have a prayer. What is it, five games in a row? Oh, come on, Justin. Don't rub it in. You want a sip? It's just a beer. I mean, your parents wouldn't mind if you drank here with me. Of course, we don't have to tell them either. Sure, since I'm winning. Oof, you are just getting way too sure of yourself, dude. Tell you what, let's make it a little more interesting. Like how? Well, let's see. Um, how about a variation of strip poker Xbox style? You know, where if you lose a game, you have to take off a piece of clothing. I don't know, that seems kind of weird to me. Oh, come on, Justin, it's just the two of us. Your dad and I used to do it all the time when we played poker back in college. What's the matter, you afraid you're gonna lose? Not hardly. We'll see. Hey dude, I need a break. If I lose too many more times, I won't have any clothes on at all. I'll look just like the guys in this DVD I wanna show you. You'll like this. Wait a sec. Dad and Mom have got all the locks on the TVs and the computers, just so I don't see this stuff. Oh, man, we used to just watch this stuff all the time. Now, my brother and your mom aren't here, are they? Besides, guys your age are interested and curious about sex. Justin, you gotta take charge. I, I wanna be in charge. Spoken like a true man. Now they're having a good time. Isn't it amazing how all you have to do sometimes to, is to just to touch someone just right to make them feel good? You'll drive the girls nuts if you can give them a good massage. Really? You're just rubbing their backs. <laughs> oh, it's learning and how to do it the right way. Let me show you. Lay on your stomach. Take your shirt off first. Now, I'm really gonna show you something. 
Now, it's rubbing the muscles in one direction, kind of elongating the muscles. Now just relax. Yeah, That's it. it. Now, if you really want to make someone feel good... Whoa. What are you doing? Can you stop? Are you okay? No, I'm not. You're not supposed to be doing this. I'm, I gotta go. Now, Justin, you don't want to do that. But what are you going to say to your parents? You, you got beer on your breath. I'll say that I, I, I caught you going in the refrigerator to get a beer after I told you you couldn't have one. Now, now who do you think they're going to believe, you or me? But you have no right to be touching me like that. Oh, come on, Justin. He's my brother. Who do you think he's going to believe? He knows that the kids always make things up and, 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 and take things the wrong way. He'll listen. Oh, right. <laughs> He'll listen. Beer breath and all, huh? All right, Justin. Make that call. Go ahead. Tell him to come and pick you up. Oh, come on, Justin. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Why don't you just come over here and relax? Come on. I don't feel so good. I gotta go. Let's have a little reality check to make sure we all got the message. Remember, the three R's. Recognize, resist, and report. Even if someone is a family friend or a relative, they don't have the right to force you or trick you into sexual touch or any situation that makes you feel uncomfortable. Remember, when we talked at the beginning about the stranger danger stories you see in the news, those things do happen, but not very often. So we want you to recognize the red flags to keep you and your friends safe. Most kids that this happens to know the person, which is why a molester tries to get them alone with them, without other adults around. They build up the relationship to be this great, trusting, caring thing, and then they turn it on you. Gifts, money, trips. Then, when you're alone with the person, trick. Recognize that situations where others are not around to help are more risky than public areas. Some might try to trick you by giving you alcohol or drugs so you won't be able to think straight. Don't take it. You've got to stay in control. And if you do take some, try to keep your head together and look for the first chance to get away. If an adult makes a move on you, resist. Tell them to stop and get away as soon as possible. Don't worry about being rude. The sooner you get away from the situation, the better off you are. When you feel threatened or uncomfortable, say, no, I don't want to do this in a strong voice. Don't stay if you don't feel safe. If you can't walk to a safe place, get help from a neighbor or a nearby adult with a phone. Knock on the door and ask them to call your parents or 911. Then wait outside. Call 911. Any cell phone or pay phone will complete a 911 call without money. The earlier you resist, the more likely it is that a molester will back off. A molester doesn't like rejection any more than the rest of us. But he also doesn't want to be caught either. If you feel threatened, keep thinking of your best ways to get away from the person. Then report it. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't think you can handle this by yourself. No one can. When it's time to tell, you should report to a trusted adult anything that hurts you or makes you feel scared or that you feel is wrong. You may be able to tell your parents. Other adults you may trust are another adult family member, school teacher or counselor, your doctor, or your religious advisor. In many communities, there are helplines to call if you are unsure about what you should do. If you were ever in this kind of situation, it is very important to tell someone so that you can stop the abuse and get some help. If you feel it's an emergency and you don't know who to trust, call 911 or the police. Then tell what happened. Don't worry about the words. Just tell what happened. But if something like this happens to you, Know that it is not your fault. Unless it will probably try to make you think it's your fault. And this is what they do to keep you quiet. But you did nothing wrong. Sometimes when boys are molested by a guy, they worry that being molested means you're gay. But all it means is you've been molested. These molesters are smooth, real cons. Recognize, resist, and report. You can do this. Protect yourself. That's your right, and that's the right thing to do.
Whether we admit it or not, we all have dreams. Things we want to accomplish. Scientist, teacher, rock star, pro athlete, actor. Known the world over for something really cool. And we all want someone to care about us and to believe in us. To help us to get where we want to go. But sometimes that person just does not have our best interests at heart. Well, what do you mean? How do I explain this to you? Some people are great cons. They pick up on when you want something so bad that you're willing to do anything to get it, and then they take advantage of that. They're really good at getting what they want. And unless you're careful, you might never see it coming. That's what happened to Jesse, a guy with a lot of talent and a lot of dreams. Take a look at what happened to him and think about what you would do if you were in the same situation. Hey, great practice, guys. Cheers. You're looking good. See you. Uh, Jesse, hang back a minute, will you? Hey, Coach, what's up? You know, I didn't want to say this in front of the other guys, but you know, you got real potential. Yeah? Oh, without a doubt. And I'm talking true pro potential. And you know, I used to scout for a pro team, so I know what I'm talking about. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah, back east in my younger days. You know, around here, some guys will make the high school team, maybe even college. But finding pro talent, that's rare. And you think I have it? <laughs> You've got potential, <laughs> but it's gonna take some work. Now, how's about a personal trainer? Well, yeah, I'd do anything to play in the pros. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> what do I have to do? All right, squeeze it up. Good. Great. You know, these extra practices with us working one-on-one -on -one are really starting to pay off. You're really putting on some muscle there, sport. Yeah. Seven. Good. Eight. Great. <laughs> Thanks for picking me up and taking me home for these night practices. That's all right. Mom's kind of got her hands full since Dad left. Hey, it's no problem. Hey, maybe you'd like to go with me to the Blackhawks game this weekend, huh? You ever sit in a skybox? A skybox? <laughs> for real? You have tickets to a skybox? It's like I told you, Jesse. I know people. And I'll help you get to know people, too. All right, come on. Give me a couple more good ones. Squeeze it out. Pop it up. That was a great game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Those close games are the good ones. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, we're gonna see if we can pump up that chest, although right. you look pretty solid right now. But you know, wait a minute. I really can't see if you're working the muscles right. Um, I'll tell you what, take off the shirt. And that, that way I can tell if you're contracting the muscles properly during the lifts, all right? Okay, here we go. Push it up there. Oh, that's much better, yeah. Now we're gonna start working this area, and then we're gonna work this area here, and then we'll move to the lower body. Whoa, wait, what are you doing? Jesse, I'm just trying to make you a hockey star. I'm trying to give you a real career, a real chance to live your dream. You don't want all that. Well, hey, I'll just stop wasting my time and my Skybox tickets. Just say the word. <laughs> That's my boy. And another thing, Jesse, there's a certain credo in hockey. You know what it is? No. What happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. Got it? Jesse, we need to discuss strategy. Come, uh, come ride with me. You don't need to be distracted by those boys before the state championship. Especially since I know there'll be some hockey scouts watching. For real? Yeah, absolutely. They're friends of mine. I, I told them to come watch you. They like to start picking their talent young. You think I'm ready to be looked at? Hey, when I'm done with you, you will be. But uh, we're gonna have to start spending a little more time together. Hey, the, the buses are leaving. Shouldn't we be going too? Nah, we'll catch up with them later. And uh, I got another surprise for you. Two tickets to Saturday's semifinal. Oh, you got tickets? <laughs> That's 
could be an awesome game. Yeah, and uh, since it's gonna run so late, I talked to your mom about you staying over Saturday night. What'd you say? Well, she's fine with the sleepover. Uh, she's just relieved to have a strong male influence in your life. Look, Jesse, this relationship, it works for everybody's benefit. Well, look, we better get going. We got a long ride ahead of us. Come on. Jesse thought he could handle what was going on and that his coach was his ticket to his dream. But the reality was, Jesse was being controlled by his coach. The guy was just using him for his own jollies. Unfortunately, Jesse's story has been played out many times. College is expensive, and good players of any sport hope their talent will get them where they want to go. So, how do you protect yourself? Just remember the three R's. Recognize, resist, and report. Recognize that something just doesn't feel right, and don't ignore that feeling. I mean, you gotta wonder why an adult would want to spend so much time with a kid. It's power and manipulation. Step away. Sex with any adult for any reason is a bad idea. Check first with your parents or the adult in charge before changing your plans or going anywhere. Recognize that situations where others are not around to help are more risky than public areas. Resist by getting away from the situation as soon as possible. The longer it goes on, the more difficult it will be to stop. When you feel threatened or uncomfortable, say no. I don't want to do this in a strong voice. Don't stay if you don't feel safe. If you can't walk to a safe place, get help from a neighbor or a nearby adult with a phone. Knock on the door and ask them to call your parents or 911. Then wait outside. Call 911. Any cell phone or payphone will complete a 911 call without money. Report the abuse. Tell your parents, your teacher, an adult you trust. That doesn't make you weak. It means you have courage. When it's time to tell, you should report to a trusted adult anything that hurts you or makes you feel scared or that you feel is wrong. You may be able to tell your parents. Other adults you may trust are another adult family member, school teacher or counselor, your doctor, or your religious advisor. In many communities, there are helplines to call if you are unsure about what you should do. If you were ever in this kind of situation, it is very important to tell someone so that you can stop the abuse and get some help. If you feel it's an emergency and you don't know who to trust, call 911 or the police. Then tell what happened. Don't worry about the words. Just tell what happened. Remember that the adult is at fault. He or she may have gotten you to do something that you're embarrassed about, but don't let that keep you from reporting. Right. By reporting, you'll not only stop your own abuse, but you'll keep the abuser from doing the same thing to someone else. Most adults will be supportive. They will listen. And remember, being abused by a male does not make you gay. And telling someone about it doesn't make you any less of a man. In fact, when you take action to stop the abuse, you're taking control of your life. The bottom line, an adult trying to have sex with you isn't really thinking about how to help you. They're just using you to get sex. And if you're a victim of sexual abuse, it's not your fault. Molesters are master manipulators. They're good at making you think you wanted it or you did something to deserve it. That way they don't have to take responsibility for what they did to a kid, which is wrong. You didn't cause it, you didn't deserve it. But if you are molested, you are a victim. They did it to you and may well do it to others. But to protect yourself and other boys, you can break the chain of silence, no matter how difficult it might seem. The only right choice is recognizing that it is time to tell, and then tell. That part's up to you. We all want to be popular, for people to like us. And to think that we're cool. It's great to have friends of all ages. It can really be a rush when an older teenager thinks you're cool. But sometimes you could find an older friend who really isn't a friend at all. A person who may seem like they really care about you. But is really only using you. That's what almost happened to Kyle in this next scenario. Kyle was new to the neighborhood and trying to make friends. He asked some kids from school to shoot hoops, but they had other plans. A party at Steve's house. Steve was a rich 17-year-old kid who had Thursday afternoon beer and drug parties for young boys. But that wasn't all that was going on. 
take a look and think about what you would have done if this situation had happened to you. He gives us beer, wine coolers, and hard lemonade. Every time it's something different. Dude, his parents don't care? They're never around. And when we go, we clean the place up and air it out. Yeah, that's probably the deal. Whoa. So, you want to come too? You coming or not? OK, hold up. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Steve. Nice wheels. Thanks. Friend of yours? This is Kyle. He's cool. Uh, well, come on in. Oh, uh, man, I've got basketball practice at 5.30, and I'm supposed to check in with my parents before I go anywhere. Don't worry about it. I'll have you back by 5.15. Have wheels. We'll travel. Kyle? No, I got practice later. And this will turn you into a maniac on the court. Ooh. Trust me. Alright. And now it's showtime! Is anybody yeah. else in here hot? That's a lot better. You know what yeah. else? Man, that girl. You're right, Steve. That is better. That's kind of what it is. <laughs> now, which will it be? Watch another movie or show y'all how to roll a joint? Joint, joint, joint. Everybody's name's in. Yeah! What's that for? It's to see who's the winner of the draw. Kyle! Woo! Prize number one, for you. DVD entitled Sweet 16 and Never Been, for you. Prize number two, Come with me. Go on, but remember, keep it quiet. Whatever happens to Steve's, stays at Steve's. Come on, Kyle, I want to show you my stuff. Oh, uh, you got a webcam connected to your computer? Sweet setup. Yeah, I know, isn't it? I got it for my birthday. I love this techno stuff. A webcam's better than an MP3 player any day. Not that I got one of those either. Yeah, I think I got one laying around here somewhere. I'll give it to you. For real? Yeah. You know, Justin's right. You are pretty cool. Thanks. What's that? Prize number two. Straight shot of tequila. No more jello for the big guy. Thanks. on fire? Everything's on fire. Yeah, no, me too. I could get out of these. Aren't you burning up? Yeah, but... It's just us. Just like in the boys' locker room. Take your pants off. It's just a game. Why does it feel like a really weird game? Oh no. I gotta go. What? I've got I gotta be at practice. Yeah, in a little while. Look, I'll I'll take I'll give you a ride in my Mercedes. I mean you won! Why don't you want to stay? I gotta go. I'll, I'll walk.
So here's what's up about this. Steve was not cool at all. He was a child molester, even though he was only 17. And even though Kyle was slow in recognition, he found a way to resist and get away. He left, told his parents who reported it to the police, who investigated Steve's afternoon parties. Kyle not only helped himself, but the other guys who were victims of Steve's abuse. And by reporting so, the situation was investigated. Kyle set the ball in motion for Steve to stop and to get the help he needed to stop that behavior. Kids who molest can get help. It's not too late for them. Let's have a reality check to make sure you stay out of trouble. Remember the three R's. Recognize, resist, and report. If you're invited into a situation that feels wrong, or you get into a situation and start to recognize there could be trouble, trust your instincts. You're probably right. Don't be afraid to leave. Trust yourself and you won't get taken advantage of. Check first with your parents or the adult in charge before changing your plans or going anywhere. Recognize that situations where others are not around to help are more risky than public areas. Even though you might think it's cool to hang out with older kids, no offense, but you gotta wonder why a guy would want to hang out with a bunch of younger kids instead of guys his own age. And then there's the mind-altering drug thing. Anyone who offers you drugs Tobacco or alcohol is just trying to keep you from thinking clearly. They're not your friends. Oh yeah, those chemicals will sure scramble your brain signals. And remember, your choices have consequences. What we had here was a party where Kyle knew there was no adults and where he knew there would be drugs and alcohol. This isn't brain surgery here. Those situations have the potential for trouble. Recognize. Then resist. Maybe you went because you were curious. And maybe you're afraid to tell your parents or a trusted adult because you did some things they won't be happy about. But the adults will see what the guy was doing to trick and confuse you. When you feel threatened or uncomfortable, say, no, I don't want to do this in a strong voice. Don't stay if you don't feel safe. If you can't walk to a safe place, get help from a neighbor or a nearby adult with a phone. Knock on the door and ask them to call your parents or 911, then wait outside. Call 911. Any cell phone or payphone will complete a 911 call without money. Report. Do tell an adult you trust. There are people who can help protect you. When it's time to tell, you should report to a trusted adult anything that hurts you or makes you feel scared or that you feel is wrong. You may be able to tell your parents. Other adults you may trust are another adult family member, school teacher or counselor, your doctor, or your religious advisor. In many communities, there are helplines to call if you are unsure about what you should do. If you were ever in this kind of situation, it is very important to tell someone so that you can stop the abuse and get some help. If you feel it's an emergency and you don't know who to trust, call 911 or the police. Then tell what happened. Don't worry about the words. Just tell what happened. No games here. Recognize, resist, report. It doesn't make you uncool. It makes you smart enough to protect yourself and courageous enough to protect others. Ben. Huh? You have missed two practices. We're not gonna win the Battle of the Band style guitar, man. I've just had some stuff I need to do. What kind of stuff? You know, just stuff, okay? Okay. By the way, some guy named Scott came looking for you. What'd he say? What'd you tell him? Well, what could we tell him, man? We didn't know where you were either. But he didn't know everything else about you. What's going on, man? Are you in some kind of trouble? Who's this Scott guy anyway? I screwed up big time, man. And I don't even know how. I found this chat room, you know, on that guitar website about a month ago. The internet is cool. It's fast, it's fun, and it saves a lot of time doing research papers, too. And don't forget about IMing and email, movie and TV clips and games. And what about chat rooms? With the internet, you can have conversations with kids all over the country, sometimes even the world, who are into the same things you are. And the best part is, you can do it completely anonymously. No one has to know who you are. Not really. What do you mean? You're not really as anonymous as you think. 
If you fill out the profile in a chat room, a semi-decent techie can figure out everything about you in just a few clicks. Do you have a profile in a chat room? Well, yeah, but I didn't put my age or my address or even my city. I'm safe. That's smart, but you probably put in your email. Based on your user profile, almost anyone can find out your email. After they get your email, they can access the content of any emails you've sent to people in that chat room or user group. Those emails might have personal information that you shared without realizing. Not just the obvious things like telephone number or address, but little clues like time zone or state, relatives' names, sports team you play for, local landmarks, or memberships in local organizations. These are seemingly small details that can be combined to track your location. Here's the thing, you never really know who you're talking to online. You don't know what's real about them or false. You don't know what they really want and you don't know them. If you don't protect yourself, you could be at risk. Here, take a look at Brian's story so you can see what we mean. See if you can recognize the warning signs and think about what you would have done if the situation happened to you. I found this chat room on that guitar website like about a month ago. I mean, it was awesome. Everybody was so into their music. And this Scott guy, man, he's in the business. He does audio for concerts all around the country. I mean, he knows everybody. Plus, you know, he was really into guitar, too. Okay, so what? Well, he asked for my email, you know, just so he could send me some music links and stuff. He was asking me where I took my guitar lessons and, you know, what part of town I lived in. You know, just stuff. I really didn't think it was that big of a deal. And he said he was interested in our band, too, man. He said he could do a demo for us, for free. Uh, what? Really, man? That's awesome! Yeah, I know, that's what I thought. He even said he had this massive guitar collection, all autographed and everything, man. He sent me pictures. Oh, I thought he was the real deal. And then he was asking me if I wanted to come over and see them, in person. You know, to come to his house. I asked if you guys could come along, but he said his apartment was too small and his neighbors would, like, freak out if too many people came in at one time. I thought he was the coolest guy I'd ever met. I didn't want to blow it. Stupid though. I still don't know what the big deal is. Well, after that, everything seemed to change. I mean, he asked me if I wanted to come over last Friday after school, and whenever I asked for directions, he said he would just pick me up. I mean, he even knows what school I go to. And I swear I didn't tell him that. We well, must just figure it out from your address. I guess so. I told him I'd have to check with my mom, and he started hassling me about it. Said that maybe I'm not cool enough to be his friend, and I'm not grown up enough to be his friend. Maybe he didn't want to be my friend anymore if I had to go running to my mom for everything. And I really didn't want to lose him as a friend and a contact for the band. So I said, okay. And then he started sending me these emails with unbelievable pictures. Unbelievable how? Just <sighs> nude pictures of girls and guys, you know, yeah. film clips and... Of? People doing it, okay? Just all kinds of sex. Just porn. Uh, just all of a sudden from some guy you, you, don't, you don't know. Wow, the pictures must have been great then, right? Well, yeah, but no, no, look, okay? There's something weird going on here. It's not just the pictures of the sex. He made some comments like he was coming on to me. But I didn't want to take him off. And I really thought he could help out the band, you know? Do your parents know? Well, no. I, I thought I could handle this. So what'd you do? I just made up some lame excuse that I couldn't go last Friday and that, you know, we'd have to reschedule and everything. Gosh, I mean, I didn't want to go see him by myself and stuff. I just... I thought I had this under control, you know? And then all of a sudden, he sends this email and attaches a picture of my house, of my dog, and of me. He said he took him with his camera phone. He's watching your house? Dude, that's like a stalker, right? Dude, that is a stalker. He's always calling my cell phone and showing up where I am. He said he'll do something to my dog if I tell anybody about this. And you know how Charlie's an outside dog. Dude, what am I gonna do? I mean, I thought I could handle this. I thought he would just go away. But every day, it just gets worse and worse. The truth is, things aren't going to get better for Brian until he tells his parents or an adult he trusts what's happening and they contact the police. Many people online is risky. Too many kids have gone to meet someone they met on the internet and found out that the person's not what he presented himself to be. 
The deal is, there are predators online, ready to take advantage of kids just looking for friends, or who can be tricked into showing up for an expensive event, like a concert, or a game, or as an expensive gift. As my older brother always says, if an offer's too good to be true, it probably is. The problem is serious enough that local and federal law enforcement agencies have developed special internet crime units. Welcome to the 21st century. So here's a reality check to keep us all out of trouble when we're online. Recognize that no matter how many emails you've sent back and forth, you really don't know who you're talking to in the chat room. No one you first meet online is your friend, and he may not even be who he says he is. Check first with your parents or the adult in charge before changing your plans or going anywhere. Recognize that situations where others are not around to help are more risky than public areas. Never give out any personal information on the internet. With just a phone number, a person can find out your address, your school, and other personal information in a matter of minutes. Resist by not responding to any online communication that makes you feel uncomfortable, scared, or even confused. Never meet someone you've met online in person without discussing it with your parents first. When you feel threatened or uncomfortable, say, No, I don't want to do this, in a strong voice. Don't stay if you don't feel safe. If you can't walk to a safe place, get help from a neighbor or a nearby adult with a phone. Knock on the door and ask them to call your parents or 911. Then wait outside. Call 911. Any cell phone or pay phone will complete a 911 call without money. If you feel threatened, bullied, or scared by a person you met online, report. Tell your parents or a trusted adult immediately. When it's time to tell, you should report to a trusted adult anything that hurts you or makes you feel scared or that you feel is wrong. You may be able to tell your parents. Other adults you may trust are another adult family member, school teacher or counselor, your doctor, or your religious advisor. In many communities, there are helplines to call if you are unsure about what you should do. If you were ever in this kind of situation, it is very important to tell someone so that you can stop the abuse and get some help. If you feel it's an emergency and you don't know who to trust, call 911 or the police. Then tell what happened. Don't worry about the words. Just tell what happened. And remember, it's not your fault. Even if you may have done something that you know is wrong, a predator is a predator. And the very best way to keep things from getting out of hand is to cut off all correspondence as soon as possible. Tell an adult and let that adult report the online perpetrator to the police. Telling does not make you any less of a person. It means you're mature enough to know when you need help to handle a dangerous situation. Hey, Sean. Hey, Mark. What's up? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, buddy, you skipped your math club meeting. You've eaten about half your dinner the last few nights, and you're quiet. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing. OK, well, then why did I see some kid walking home from school wearing your jacket? Someone giving you a hard time in school? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. Chances are you've seen a movie, a TV show, or even a cartoon that had a bully in it. Like Draco Malfoy and Harry Potter or Nelson Muntz, the ultimate professional bully. Yeah, but a person who bullies in the real world isn't so funny. And the bad news is, there's a lot of them out there. So how do you protect yourself? Learn how to fight. Oh, well, that's great. Then you'll both be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a bully doesn't beat up on you with a one-two punch. He can use words, put you down, try to turn people against you, and the thing is, sometimes all you have to do is just be standing in the wrong place at the wrong time to become a bully's next target. There are ways to try to deal with the bully on your own, but it also helps to get your parents and other trusted adults involved. Adults are supposed to be helping us be safe. Part of their job is to stop bullying. Let's take a look at how Sean handles things when he's being bullied by some kids in school. Think about how you would have handled the situation if it were happening to you. I don't even know these guys and it happened. They started calling me names like Shortski, which didn't despise the others. All right, fine, go away, be a loser, we don't care. Between classes, with tons of people around. Or they chase me in the locker room and take my stuff. Nobody does anything to help. They say I'm not good enough to be in their space. They think they're so much better than me, and I'm such a loser. 
Hey, you're not the loser, all right? They're the losers. They're the most popular kids in school. Well, that may be, Sean, but they're bullying people. I mean, they're the ones with the problem. They get their attention and their power by picking on others they don't deem worthy. I mean, what makes them think that they have the right to do that? Who says they're so much better, huh? They've only got friends that are scared of them. They don't have any real friends. Neither will I when they're done. They took pictures of me in gym class without my shirt on. Pass them around the school. Nobody pays attention to that stuff. Oh, yeah? Well, the whole school is staying away from me. They pass me in the hall, look at me weird, and make some jerk comment to me and to each other. They're scared of these guys. I've got one friend left. Marty? Yeah, he saw them picking on me and tried to stop them. Then they started in on him, too. Oh, are we picking on your friend? Well, what are you gonna do about it? Tell your mommy? What wimps. Come on, son. Let's get out of here. You don't need this. I didn't want them to start in on Marty. It's getting bad, Mark. They take my money. They've started to push me around rougher and rougher. I don't know why they hate me so much. I just wish it would stop or we would move. But everything I do seems to make it worse. I just wish I could disappear. So how long has this been going on anyway? All fall. They yell and laugh about me in front of everyone about how small I am for an eighth grader. So does Marty sit on your head to stay that short? Or did you just stop growing at birth? <laughs> <laughs> and they do the same to anyone else who's nice to me. I thought I could handle it. I looked online and tried everything I could find to try. Well, have you tried to ignore them? They might go away if they see that they can't get to you. I mean, what bullies want is a reaction anyway. Hey, short ski. What are you, Dad? Come on, man, say something. Get back over here. I'm I not go crying. grab your mommy. That's what I thought too, but it didn't make them stop. Then I thought I'd make a big joke about it. I thought maybe if I acted as though the whole thing was funny, they'd go away. Smile for the camera, short ski. Oh, whoa, he's so small. We have to zoom in. I know I'm small. Should I stand on a box? But nothing seems to work. Just gets worse every day. Look, you've tried some good ways to try and prevent more situations, but it's gone on way too long, and it's getting worse. You need to tell mom and dad, Sean, and they need to talk to the school. Schools are supposed to have rules about bullying. And if you're worried about them making things worse, well, then you need to let them know that, all right? Don't worry, pal. I'll be there when you talk to them. Okay. No, the only thing you haven't done is tell them to stop. Yeah, but Mark... I'm not confident like you. I get nervous. What will I say? I want you to stop bullying me? That's good. That's a good start, Sean. And if you want help, we'll practice, all right? You've tried some good things that sometimes work. And if they don't stop? Then report them. Go to the school principal or, or tell the school policeman or the school gang prevention unit. Doesn't that make me a snitch? No. You're not supposed to keep someone's secret when they're hurting you. I mean, what's that about anyway? All right, look, you tried to get them to stop, and they didn't. You gave them that chance. If they didn't listen, that's their problem. Hey, besides, chances are you're not the only one they're doing this to. That's for sure. All right, and if you want, we'll practice. Pretend I'm the bully. And we'll do it so many times until you're ready to rock and roll, all right? And then we're going to tell Mom and Dad. Deal? Deal. That night, Mark and Sean talked to their parents. And early the next morning, the parents called the school officials. So the next day... You looking at me? Well, yeah, you were this close as we passed. Excuse you, you're not supposed to be in my space unless I tell you it's okay. Leave me alone and quit harassing me. Uh, Mr. Barton, Sean's right. Now this has got to stop. We've got policies here at Long Middle School about bullying. Oh, we were just teasing him. We didn't hit him or anything. Yeah, well, your definition of teasing is the school's definition of bullying behavior. It won't be tolerated here, and we're not willing to wait around and see if your verbal abuse gets physical. Snitch. Hey, I said it stops right now. And we're going to be checking with Sean often to confirm that no more of your bullying behavior is going on. Now, you three, get to my office. Sean, go to class. Dealing with a person who bullies is tough because you think that telling your parents or school officials might make things worse. 
If you're being bullied, keep in mind that they're not supposed to be doing this. Schools are trying to stop bullying. It takes a lot of courage to tell, but you can talk to the school policeman or the anti-gang unit in your school if you have one, and make sure your parents talk to school officials. But bullying can happen outside of school. There are some things you can do to help prevent bullying situations. Avoid isolated places and being alone. Stay out in public at break and lunchtime where there are plenty of other people. But on the other hand, the bullies who like an audience may strike in a crowd. They use this situation to threaten onlookers as well as the victim. If you take the bus, sit close to the driver. And if you walk or ride your bike to school, find a friend or two to travel with. Go in a group. The more, the better. You're less likely to be a victim if you're with other people. Other things that can work are you can try ignoring the person who is harassing you. Or pretend that the harassment doesn't bother you. Bullies like to see a reaction. If you don't show one, they might move on. You could try humor. Sometimes a witty comeback disarms the person who bullies. Or be direct and in a strong voice. Say, this is not a game, and I want you to stop now. But if the harassment has been going on a long time, and all you want to do is run away, protect yourself and talk to your parents and school officials, school police, school anti-gang unit, principal, or adults in charge of the activity if it's outside of school. If you have a hard time talking to your parents about what's going on, you can talk to a trusted adult or relative and ask them to help explain the situation to your parents. When you do talk to your parents, let them help you make a list of possible solutions. That way you can choose the option you think will work best for you. If you decide to confront the bully, practice what you're going to say, either in front of a mirror with a friend or with parents or an adult you trust. And if you see someone else getting bullied, it is your responsibility to do something. What you do depends on you and on the situation. You might go stand beside that person so he or she won't be alone. You might tell the person bullying to stop. You may go get help from an adult, especially if the bullying is getting physical, or later tell someone about it. You can do this in confidence if you're afraid the bullies are going to come after you, but don't stay silent. Silence allows the situation of bullying to keep going. What do you do if bullying gets physical? If there are any adults around, yell, leave me alone! in the hope of getting some help from one of them. Then there's the possibility we all have to consider. What would I do if I was physically assaulted and there was no one to help? Fighting back is a terrible idea. It could escalate the violence and get you in trouble as well. Another option is to put your hands up to protect yourself and run. Get out of there as soon as you can. Remember, being bullied doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. The person who bullies is the one with the problem. No kidding. The only way they can feel important is to be mean to other people. Sad, huh? Mm -hmm. People who bully do it for all sorts of reasons. Some don't really like themselves very much. They could be jealous of you. Some people who bully have a low self-esteem, but a lot feel great about themselves. And they think they have every right to harass other people. Others who bully do it as a defense to being bullied. Some people join in just to go along with the leaders who bully. No one deserves to be bullied. Bullying others can be against the law. Stealing money is theft. Blackmailing others is extortion. Physically hurting someone is assault. Take care of yourself. Avoid being alone. Stay with the group. Stand up for yourself or a friend. And don't be afraid to tell. Sometimes that's the only answer.